All right, in this video, we are gonna use GeoGebra 3D to take a look at um, optimization problems uh, for multivariable functions. So uh, in particular, we're gonna look at global extremes. So we're gonna have some kind of uh, region in the XY plane, and we're gonna check the maximum and minimum values of a surface above or below that uh, region. So uh, let's see what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna start with GeoGebra Classic. And uh, oh, today it's letting me pick. So I want to see 3D graphics. And uh, so it's all set up. If that doesn't pop up for you, which it usually doesn't for me, uh, if you click and click the three bars over here, go to view, and you can check or uncheck the things that you need or don't need. So this is actually what I need. So I'm pretty good to go with that. So what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to take a look at these problems. So uh, you can see they're just uh, determine the global extreme values of the function on the given domain. I think it's really useful to be able to like look at them. So uh, they're all f of x, y. So I'm going to just slide this over so that it's a little smaller. And uh, I don't really need to see it, although I mean the visual is the whole point. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to click this just so that uh, I can always mess around with this. Uh, I'm going to start off. Let's do. Um, Let's try f of x y equals, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do this problem. So x cubed. You can see it starts like guessing what you what it thinks you're trying to plot. So x squared y, and then plus two y squared. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. All right, not bad. Uh, it's kind of weird, whatever's going on over here, that like this randomly shows up, but I don't, I don't know. It's probably not going to be a big problem. Uh, all right, so uh, x is greater than zero, y is greater than zero, x plus y is less than or equal to one. All right. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start parameterizing uh, the. So I mean, I could just type. Look, let's do this. X equals zero. Y equals zero and x plus y equals one. So we have three planes. And if you look, there's like that really tiny region there, uh, kind of a triangle type situation uh, that, well, I mean, it's literally a triangle that we're gonna uh, constrain ourselves to. So what I wanna do is I wanna find the trace of the surface in each of these planes. So to do that, uh, I'm going to use the curve command. So for example, when x is equal to 0, I'm going to do curve. And I'm going to give it three things. So I'm going to say x is equal to 0, always. Uh, y I'm going to say is equal to t. And then uh, I need to parameterize the uh, surface. So f of 0 comma t. And this is going to give us the trace in the plane x equals 0. And then what can y be? So uh, y, because uh, x plus y is less than or equal to one, the biggest y could ever be is one. So I'm gonna let t go from zero, ooh, I got t, and from zero to one. And I'm gonna press enter. And you can see that a little trace has shown up. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn off x equals zero, because it's just kind of messing things up. All right, so we found that trace, and now what I wanna do is find another one. So I'm gonna find the trace in uh, y equals zero. So again, we're gonna use curve, and then I'm gonna say that, uh, so y is gonna be equal zero, so x is going to be t, our parameter, y is zero, and then it's gonna be f of t comma zero, comma, t is the parameter, and then t, uh, for the same reason that y could go from zero to one, x can go from zero to one, so x has to be greater than or equal to zero, and x plus y has to be less than or equal to one. So the biggest x could ever be is one. So zero to one, and press enter. And if you move this around, you can see another trace has shown up. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll turn off this. Okay, and now what I wanna see is the trace in x plus y equals one. All right, so let's think about this. It's gonna be a curve. I'm gonna let x equal t because that's kind of my preference. So if x is equal to t and x plus y is equal to one, then y is equal to 
one minus, so y is equal to one minus x, but in this case, one minus t, and then comma, f of, I'm just gonna sub in these things. So x was equal to t and y is equal to one minus t. And then t is our parameter and t can do the same thing that x can do and x is allowed to go from zero to one, so zero to one. And press enter and you can see that a third trace has shown up. All right, so what I will do now is I'm gonna turn off x plus y equals one and we have our surface and it looks okay but uh, there's a little bit more that we can do so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here so I can choose to rotate graphics view I'm gonna choose move graphics view and you see the way it is now if I click this I can move like left and right if I click here I can move up and down I can move this down I can move it up what I really want to do is I'm going to put it right on the z-axis and then I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? You know what I want to do? I'm going to zoom in. Let's just zoom in, see what happens. Let's click there, click there, maybe one more. Okay, uh, let's rotate. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so we can see what's going on. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm looking for the maximum minimum of the surface kind of on this region. But I want to do one more thing. So I want to see only the surface within that region. So to do this, I am going to do something a little weird. I'm going to use an if. So down here, I'm going to type if. And then it needs a condition and then what to do if the condition is met. So parenthesis. All right, so what needs to be true? First thing I'm going to say is that x has to be between uh, 0 and 1. So I'm going to say 0, whoops, okay, let's, let's try that again. If 0 and less than or equal to x, less than or equal to, as soon as I hit equal it changes it. Um, I'm typing the less than symbol and then the equal symbol and it changes it to less than or equal to. So x is between 0 and 1. Now I need to say and. So to do that I'm going to type, uh, so for me it's shift 7 and shift seven again. So it's ampersand, ampersand. And as soon as I do that, it changes it into the relational symbol or the logistic, well, logical symbol and, which is what I need. So that's uh, shift seven, shift seven on my keyboard, just ampersand, ampersand. Um, all right, so what is y doing? Y is going to be zero less than or equal to y. And then I know that x plus y is less than or equal to one so y is less than or equal to one minus x. So I'm gonna say less than or equal to one minus x. So if this is true, show me, so comma, f. And otherwise, don't show me anything, so I'm not gonna fill it in. So just press enter. And you can see that over here, uh, we've got this shaded region now, which is good, because that's what we wanted. So I'm gonna turn off this, and now you can see exactly what you're doing you are looking for the biggest and smallest function value that occurs on this kind of like cut out region of the surface. Um, and that's all you're ever doing with these problems. But if you can't visualize it, it's a lot harder to do. So this is why we um, find the critical points of the function, and then we check to see if they're within the region in the xy plane. So you can actually do kind of a neat thing once you have this done. Uh, if you rotate it correctly, and then rotate it, you can see the region in the xy plane, right? We got um, x is greater than zero, y is greater than zero, and x plus y is less than or equal to one. So we get this triangle. So we're trying to find on that region in the xy plane, what's the biggest and smallest function value you can have? And the function lives above it in this case. So we get this. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do, is, I mean, that's done. I'm gonna do one more just to show you the process again. So uh, I think the next one that I do, uh, I'm gonna do this one, x squared plus y squared minus two x minus four y, x is greater than or equal to zero, zero to three, and y is greater than or equal to x. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one because I have another video where I did this problem by hand to just kind of like uh, solve it and go through the whole process. So let's try to do it. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna get another GeoGebra Classic page. Um, and I want the three, uh, 3D graphics. Okay, we're gonna go through basically the same process. So the function, so I like to click this. So if you don't click that, 
you can still type this f of x y equals uh, x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 4y press enter it messes up your ability to get to the settings for this um, so what I like to do is just click it immediately and then you'll always be able to get to these um, all right so that's our surface now what are we gonna worry about x is greater than or equal to 0 y is between 0 and 3 and y is greater than or equal to x um, so maybe you immediately see that and realize what it means I kind of don't so what I will do is I'm gonna go back here and get another page right because you can get as many of these as you want um, and this is good enough and let's actually uh, let's just type that in let's see what happens so I need uh, X to be greater than or equal I mean I can just visualize that so I don't really need that um, I need, well let's do it let's say X is greater than or equal to zero what does that look like okay so we shaded that that's good I need Y to be between zero and three so zero less than or equal to Y less than or equal to three okay so that's good and then finally I need Y to be greater than or equal to X so Y is greater than or equal to X all right so you see this region that's shaded here that's the region that I want to work with and so it's useful right if you're doing it by hand you kind of like sketch it maybe put some arrows maybe shade everything find the thing that is shaded every time uh, if you have access to it why not just graph it right okay so I have a really good idea I think of what I want to do so let's go back um, here and let's start putting in our things right so we have um, x is greater than or equal to zero so I'm gonna graph x equals zero I have y is between zero and three so I mean I'm gonna graph those y equals zero y equals three and then uh, y is greater than or equal to x so I'm gonna graph y equals x okay so do you get anything out of this uh, it's kind of hard to, to visualize but remember we already know what it is it's kind of uh, this triangular region up here so let's start um, let's start finding the traces and turning off some of these or maybe even deleting them all right so the first trace I'm gonna do when x equals zero well actually I'm gonna do y equals no I'm gonna do x equals zero because I know that y is between zero and three so here we go curve x equals zero so zero uh, y is between zero and three so I'm gonna let it be t and then I need to parameterize the surface so f of zero comma t t is my parameter and then I know that y is between zero and three so zero to three and I get this so that was when x equals zero so I'm just gonna delete this and there we go that's our trace so we're probably gonna want to play around with this a little bit to see um, more of it but so far so good all right so now uh, what do I want to do so I'm gonna go back to my picture so x equals 0 is done uh, let's do y equals x and x can be anything between 0 and 3 and so let's do that all right so curve curve y is equal to x so I'm gonna let x equal t y is equal to x so y is also equal to t so I get f of t comma t t is my parameter and then I already know that y has to be between 0 and 3 so I can actually just steal that and say 0 to 3 I'm gonna press enter and we have another one so that's in the plane y equals x or it should be wherever that is okay I kind of got it it can be hard when there's like a lot of things also GeoGebra by default makes all your vertical planes the same color which is not super great uh, all right so that was y equals x get rid of that delete uh, I'm gonna go back to my region uh, so the last one I need to do is y equals 3 okay so if y is equal to 3 so we'll do curve I'm gonna let x be the parameter t y is definitely 3 so f of t comma 3 and then uh, x has to be able to go from 0 to 3 so that y equals x can intersect y equals 3 so t is my parameter 0 to 3 press enter all right let me delete a few more delete this and delete this because I don't need them okay so I can kind of see things but here I'm definitely going to need to move things around so I'm gonna click here click on the move graphics view 
And the first thing is right now it'll let me move it left, right. I'm going to click once and it changes. Now I can move it up and down. I'm going to move it up. And then I'm going to stop there, click again, go back to rotate. That looks pretty good. I think I can see everything that's happening. And all right, so now what I want to do is I don't want to see the full surface. I just want to see the surface that's inside of these traces, right? So to do that, we're going to do the same thing we did before, right? We're going to use an if. So if, all right, so x is between 0 and 3. 0 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3. And so that's shift 7 for an ampersand, shift 7 again, it changes it. Uh, okay, so y has to be greater than or equal to x. Um, okay, so greater than or equal to x, but also less than 3. So I'm going to say x less than or equal to y less than or equal to 3. So if those two things are true, show me f. And I'm going to press enter. You can see it showed up, um, but it looks a little weird. So what I'll do now is I'm going to turn off the original function, not delete it, just turn it off. And we have this. Okay, I think that that is definitely what we wanted to see. So one thing you might want to do is if you go back to move graphics, put this right on the z-axis. I'm going to put it down here. Well, there. Um, you can stretch the axis. And that might help you see it a little better. It might not. All right, so we have that. I'm going to turn this off. So I'm right clicking or two finger clicking on that. And I'm going to turn off the plane. Uh, and we see that. All right, so you can see, and this is what's really useful about this, right? So the trace here, right? This trace right here, you can see there's going to be a critical point, And that critical point will be a minimum. We're never going to know that because we're just going to evaluate the function. So we'll get one critical point for this trace. For this trace, we'll get another critical point here at this minimum along the trace. Uh, we'll get a minimum along this, so another critical point for this one. But none of those will be the absolute max or min because you can see that the absolute max is happening at this corner and maybe this corner. And the absolute minimum will be at a critical point that's going to occur within the region. So we're going to end up with a critical point somewhere in there. Um, and I actually already did this problem, so what I could do is I could type in the values. So there's another video of me doing this totally by hand. Um, so I got the corners were 0, 0. So then I want to see f of 0, 0. And then uh, 3, 3. And I want to see f of 3, 3. And 0, 3. And I want to see f of 0, 3. And 1, 2. And I want f of 1, 2. So that's the critical point. And then uh, 0, 2 and f of 0, 2. So this is the one that we get for the trace, right? So there's a critical point somewhere along the trace. And at that, it would have been a minimum if we had tested it. We didn't test it because all we do is evaluate the function. Um, so it's not the absolute max. It's not the absolute min. So we kind of don't care about it. But we had to find it because it could have been. And then uh, 3 halves comma 3 halves comma f of 3 halves comma 3 halves. That's another critical point that occurs along a trace. And then also 1, 3, f of 1, 3. That is the last critical point that occurs along a trace. So you can see there are three critical points for the traces. Each one has a critical point. There are the corners of the region, and then there's the critical point within the region. So this is kind of a summary of them, right? We got corner, 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 on a trace, on a trace, on a trace, critical point within the region. Um, and that's how we do it. So I think it's really useful to be able to look at these things. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.